This is Sandy Palmer. She had been a secretary, but is now a technician with the telephone company. Vicki Mitchell started as a legal secretary and became a deputy district attorney by attending law school at night. Patty Striegel married at 16, returned to high school, and progressed from clerk to scheduling supervisor. Iris Ball, after years as a secretary, is now the equal opportunity director of a large corporation. Heather Campbell studied in college for a professional career. She is now doing research on the Soviet Union. Donna Turner worked her way up from teller to vice president and branch manager of one of the world's largest banks. Harriet Palermo, while still in school, was a part-time sales clerk. Today, she is a merchandising manager. Annette Rune went from secretary to an insurance account executive specializing in commercial sales. Dorothy Gregory is in her company's executive training program and is now manager of a large retail store. Verna Oberlin, after many years as a secretary, is now an administration manager in the aerospace industry. Edie Scott, with the help of her supervisor, has moved from secretary to an assistant in public relations. Clara Haynes, after years in personnel work, is now deputy administrator of a large urban hospital. Twelve working women, twelve career women, twelve like you. Hi, I'm Jerry Kramer, and I'll bet you're wondering what an ex-pro football player like me is doing talking about career opportunities for women, right? Well, it's pretty simple. When I retired from the Green Bay Packers to go into business, you still heard plenty of comments like, gee, she makes a lot of money for a woman. Or even, she's doing a pretty good job for a woman. To tell you the truth, I said some of those things myself. But like a lot of other guys, I've learned quite a bit since then about how well women work and how well they can do most any kind of job, except maybe play pro football. But I think the most important thing we've all learned is we need to stop perpetuating the battle of the sexes and instead start making sure that the best qualified person, man or woman, gets the opportunity to do a job and build a career. We've talked to 12 women who are in the process of doing just that, building careers. Their experiences might help you. Our 12 women are not exactly ordinary women. But they're not super women either. They're just like you. To get to know each of them better, let's briefly let them do what women have always done as well as men, talk. Well, I don't think working women should oppose the woman who wants to stay home, nor should the woman who stay home oppose the working woman who wants to work, because it's the opportunity to do what you personally want, to find yourself that's important. I've always looked around and I've seen other people in the same type of jobs that I have and I say to myself, if they can do it, I certainly can do it. And I also do this when I look up to the next move that I'd like to make. I must have a sort of an inner drive because I've never yet been in a job where I didn't feel that this isn't the end. I want to go further. I want to do something beyond this. I became kind of rather dissatisfied and took some tests and came out very high in writing and um, public speaking and dealing with people and you say, well, what does that mean? And I look around and I say, well, maybe that means PR, <laughs> you know. I'd never found a secretarial job that was really exciting where I would hold the duties, you know, and there would really be some responsibility on I me. Mean, I think that's why I like the frame job. I came uh, over to the uh, hospital uh, taking a voluntary demotion in order to enter the administrative field because I had been in the personnel field. I feel it was well worth it. I went back to school and I, night school. Number one because it was important to me to have at least a high school uh, diploma and number two I went back to night school so I could advance myself at the company I, that I now work for. Some place in the education process in the last four and a half or five years. I became interested in law and now I am considering 
going to law school and obtaining a law degree, and I intend to do this at nighttime while I am working during the daytime. I accept any opportunity to give a seminar either on work in progress or on completed work to give briefings um, to uh, make my, my work more visible. I have to uh, fill out the situation, determine whether or not the problem, if I am going to have a problem with a judge, and more often than not I don't because I am a woman or because I am black, if I am going to have a problem, I have to first determine whether he doesn't like me because I'm a girl or he doesn't like me because I'm black. My father is from Greece, and he is very, very old-fashioned. He believes that a wor woman's place is in the home, no other place. And if I hear it once, I hear it ten times a month, why don't you quit and stay home? Give up the job. You belong here with your daughter. But fine, if that's what he wanted his wife to do, my mother, she did it, she never worked. I think that's fine, they were happy. I'm happy doing what I'm doing. There's a change in attitude probably most everywhere. There's, there's a change in attitude in my company. There used to be a time, of course, when uh, it wasn't considered that women would stick around long enough, that they had the temperament, that they were interested enough, that they would simply work hard enough as, as a man in any sort of management position. Uh, once again, maybe, maybe we don't make the best football players in the world, but we sure do know how to work. Now, maybe things haven't gone as far or as fast as everybody would like. But one thing's for sure, the climate has changed, and changed drastically from what it was even five years ago. Today, it's possible for a woman to have more than just a job. She can build a career, if that's what she wants. But is a career the right thing for you? One way to find out is to ask yourself why you want a career and what you want out of it. There are a couple of main reasons I work. One reason is that I really do want to do something significant in a career. I think that everyone should develop to their best potential. Out here, or, or working in a job, there are things that are my responsibilities, things that I have to take care of, that I have to create, I have to do, and they're going to sink or swim depending on how well I do my job, and it's, I like that. I've worked since I was 13. And uh, not being able to work uh, leaves a void in me. The thing that has been the single most motivating factor is perhaps an intrinsic kind of motivation, a desire to succeed, a desire to learn, a desire to do something different, and to advance in whatever I am pursuing. A lot of years you go around trying to find your way and then an awful lot of people uh, tried to find their way vicariously uh, through someone else. That doesn't work. I wanted something that was mine, that I earned, that I worked for, uh, a success that I could be proud of, and something that nobody could ever take away. And you know, once it's mine and once I work for it and once I own it, it is mine and there is nothing in this world that can take that away from me something nobody in this world can take away from you. That sure is part of what you've got to want. You must want to build to achieve. You've got to want to find yourself. Want to go just as far as your own potential will take you. That's mighty important, wanting to. But there's a lot of other things a woman should consider that are just as important. I think that a woman that plans on being a career woman plans on excelling, ought to sit down, and it's not going to take one day. It's not going to take a week. It might take a month. Sit down and really talk to yourself and think it out. What do you want to do? If you're planning to work for the next 20 years, what are you going to be happiest doing? She first needs to establish what her strong points are. Now, this would be true for male or female, incidentally. I believe that if a man is in the job that utilizes these strong points he has, these, these strengths, then he progresses further. So the first thing to determine, what do I do best? If a woman decides she wants to pursue a career, that is where uh, what I like to term a sense of reality comes into it. First of all, what can you do? Not what would you like to be. I want to be a movie star. Ah, the odds are you're not going to be one. What can you do? 
in evaluating a, a woman's potential, she must uh, look at her own educational background and how much uh, more time and money she's willing to invest in her educational future. But she must also know herself what her aspirations are. I think a woman has to look inside herself and see if she really wants to take on the burden of responsibility of assuming a supervisory role. It takes a great deal of time. She has to be willing to work overtime, to spend long hours at her job, to take self-development courses on her own time in the evenings, and you have to look inside yourself and see if that's really what you want to do as a woman. Taking the time and effort to find out the truth about yourself, what you're willing to do and what you aren't, and then being able to admit it and live with it. It's not always easy, but it's very, very necessary. And then once you've done it, what about where you want to go and how are you going to get there? We encourage every employee to state what their aims and desires are, and that would be male and female, and uh, state their goals. Then once you know the goals of the individual, you can perhaps help them attain them. Don't make the goal as high as you anticipate getting and work towards that lower goal. Once you've gotten there, then you shouldn't have too much trouble in getting the rest of it. This is the philosophy of low risk. You're not putting everything on the line with every move that you make. You're putting little things, and you're, and you're probably almost 80% sure that you're going to make that because it is a low risk situation. This goal or these goals will change from time to time. I don't think that there is any one set thing that a woman can say, I want to do and, and stick with that forever. For most women, just like you, goals naturally do change. As you keep getting better, you keep raising your sights. But as you raise your sights, you also have to investigate carefully the specific job opportunities that will keep your career advancing. How can women do that? They might explore their own company to see what is available for the female in helping them on the right road, uh, something that would guide them in getting where they want to go. At my own company, we have what's called a career fields guide. It lists uh, by function the very, very basic job code, the position, the salary grade, and then the various levels to where you can progress. We have a great program here at our company. I don't know how they work it anywhere else, and I guess I just have to relate it to that. And that is we have uh, what they call different career development plans. Uh, we have great supervisors that sit down and you talk to them about what you want to do with yourself. Uh, they set up an internal uh, career development plan for you, uh, tell you what you have to take in so far as uh, educational things from, from college. They, they work on developing you as far as on-the-job training is concerned. Every job location has a book with all the different job classifications listing in there and what's qualified, what the requirements are and what the job takes into effect, what you have to be doing on the job. And I think once you kind of look it over and decide what you'd like to do or what you'd like to try to do, the best thing to do is talk to your immediate supervisor and then he would find out what kind of openings there were, if you really did qualify for it, and what the job really was like. We should periodically reevaluate their progress. And if they aren't making the kind of progress that they want to make, then they should look around for other opportunities, either in their own company or in other companies. There are many uh, different organizations that you can call or counseling services, really through the schools, that give you an idea as to what is involved and what you have to do. Uh, if it's too much for you, then pick something else. And if it isn't, uh, then go ahead and try it. If they are thinking of a specific field, I, I would go directly to those people that are working in the field and talk to them. If a, a woman feels that, for instance, the retail field might be interesting to them, their best bet would, to be, would be to go to a retail company and talk to their personnel department about what the opportunities, what the types of jobs are, and what a job entails in the field. Uh, this way she'll get some kind of an idea if this is really what she wants. And the next best thing is to get a job and actually do it. And that brings you to the real moment of truth. The moment when you have to start taking the courses, making the contacts, and doing all the other things that will make you qualified to succeed in the career program you've set up for yourself. I'm not 
able to speak for other organizations. I believe most organizations have job opportunity training programs. I would suggest that any girl who's interested in getting ahead would speak to her immediate supervisor, make her feelings known, tell her supervisor that she feels that she would like to advance in her career, and from then on take every available course that's available to you, and I believe that's the way to get ahead. As far as on-the-job training is concerned, I don't think anyone can make it without having it. For a managerial position, I feel that outside education is important as it relates to behavioral sciences, human relations, business management, these types of things. I've been going to school at night for quite a few years and I see people quite a bit younger and quite a bit older and I guess education never really stops. I came out of college with the idea that if you performed well you would get rewarded for it uh, without any further ado. When the course was over the instructor awarded you a grade on the basis of your work and that was all there was to it. Uh, I had nothing to do with politicking or influencing professors and I didn't feel that that was necessary. Uh, it's slightly different in the business world. I think it really is important to advertise your work and promote yourself. <coughs> also to have a very high opinion of yourself as an individual. I think she's got to ring her own bell. I think she's got to go out there and pound her drum and convince other people besides herself that she can do this. Supervisors are always looking for those people with that little extra that work a little harder and do a little more and take on a little more responsibility. I know of no other way than to make people aware that you have talent other than performing on the job you have currently at an above average level. Women who hesitate, who say, I wouldn't want to work for another woman, I think that it's a loss to the person who is the secretary. Because if she does a good job, the woman for whom she is working is probably very interested in promoting her, if, she, if the secretary is interested in being promoted. Giving your job a little extra, ringing your own bell, knowing who you are, what you want, how you intend to get it. They're all very important for any woman or for any man who wants to build a career. But what about things like family responsibilities? As a woman, how do you reconcile them with the demands of a career? The most important thing is if your husband is really, really against it, you know, I think that that's the biggest bridge. You've really got to do your homework at home first because if he's going to really give you a rough time and make your life miserable at home, um, I don't see how you can really be as efficient on the job. I think you've really got to work that at home and get his thinking uh, changed around a bit. I have a husband who believes that it's our money. It's not his and it's not mine. It's ours. My kids, I have three boys, all of whom are very pleased by the idea. But then my family has always been such uh, that the dishes have to be done. Who cares who does it? It's not demeaning or degrading to anybody. You, you or you. You get the dishes, you make the beds, you clean the floor, and you go to the market. So we've always divided labor like that, and my family thinks it's great. Mothers that work uh, are always concerned about this. You wonder if the child will be affected by your, your not being there. And so I carefully checked always whenever uh, we went to conferences at school or anyone who was with Jan. and. Um, found that it hasn't appeared to make any difference to her at all. I think a lot of the fears are unfounded because she's been extremely well adjusted. And then you realize that it isn't the quantity of the relationship, it truly is the quality of the relationship. I think your children have to know that if they need you, you will be there. Uh, but uh, they really don't need as much of your presence as, as you are apt to think they do. Striking the right kind of balance between family and career responsibilities is a problem many women, just like you, have had to cope with. But there's one situation that all women have to handle, each in her own personal way. Can you be a successful career woman and still be a woman? Aggressiveness and, uh, and femininity do not always go hand in hand, and at least uh, stereotypically do not go hand in hand. And that is one of the problems and one of the things I think that is bred out of female children, aggressiveness, because it's not nice to, 
to go after what you want and say, I want, that's not ladylike. I tend to withdraw if I think that I am going to, to have to be uh, too aggressive in uh, accomplishing what I think has to be accomplished. By the same token, I must admit that I will not let people walk over me. Keeping the image of being a girl is important. Uh, I think it's important in, in maintaining the respect of the men, and I think it's important in being treated like a lady. And I don't think it has anything to do with whether they feel you're capable or not. What is feminine? Is she necessarily frail and delicate? And, oh my goodness, I can't change a tire. All right, maybe she is. Uh, I don't think of myself as being particularly unfeminine. But if the door has to be opened, and I'm the first guy there, guy being generic, I'll open it. If you want to open the door for me, great. That's nice, too. I don't want to be a man. And any woman who does want to be a man is in a lot of trouble. And right then and there, she's not ever going to be feminine. It's difficult for me to say success means masculine and uh, subserviency means feminine. I, I don't think they really are... Uh, should be related in, in, in uh, I know many women are afraid to succeed because they're afraid that men will see them in a, a less than feminine light. It shouldn't really affect you at all. I think that the female has to be aggressive. She has to show a lot of initiative. She has to show that she really cares rather than just sit back and say, I'm a female, promote me. I, I really believe that you've got to show the initiative, you've got to be willing to work. You can't expect any privileges because you're a female. She said it, I didn't. But you know, I think it bears repeating. You can't expect any special privileges because you're a female. But you can expect advancement if you work for it. Like many others, these 12 women have proved that. They wanted careers, they worked for careers, and they built careers. How? They took the time to analyze themselves thoroughly and honestly, to learn what their personalities and motivations really were, and what skills and knowledge they had. Then they set goals for themselves, realistic goals, and they set about achieving them. They found out what specific job opportunities were right for them, and got the education and training they needed for their jobs and for their careers. They learned how to ring their own bells, so that people would recognize their abilities and their efforts and give them the chance they needed. And while they were doing this, they learned how to cope with those situations which face so many career women, how to maintain your family life, and how to be effective in your job without submerging your femininity or your personality. It wasn't always easy for them, but it sure wasn't impossible either. They made it. And if you want to and you work at it, you can make it because like so many others who achieve their career goals, these 12 women are just like you. <laughs>